Hello everyone, welcome to MDLR Fishing. My name is Mark and today we're gonna to talk about the differences between the Old Town Autopilot 136 and the 120. Both platforms are spectacular whenever they're out there on the water. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna put the GoPro hat on and we'll talk about the main differences and what you can expect from each platform and uh, just be able to better make a decision on what's going to suit your needs. Alrighty everyone, uh, let's get started and in no particular order we're going to start with the Autopilot 136. The length is the biggest difference between both of these kayaks. We'll come back here to the rear, they're both on line and then we make our way up to the bow of the kayak and you can see how the 136 has an extra foot and a half of length. So 136, 13 and a half foot long. The 120, that is 12 feet long. With the additional length, you've got far more deck space over here. You can see that we have eight scupper holes in the 120 deck, there's only five. With the additional deck space, uh, it makes the kayak a bit more stable. I was able to stand on the deck, turn around really easy, and that's in motion, that's uh, with the motor. Uh, cruising. Uh, I, I can still do it over here but it's a bit more tipsy so you get bigger deck space, more stability over there on the 136. We come to the tank well you've only got three tiers. There's one, two, three and then on the 136 you have one, two, three, four. So again additional space back here for more cargo and everything that you want to take with you. With the additional length you also get better tracking so as I'm push pulling through the marsh uh, this kayak tracks a lot better than the 120 but that goes without saying any longer kayak is going to be able to paddle and track better uh, in this case push pull I wouldn't dare try to paddle this but uh, so it tracks a lot better and it also drafts way better uh, I find that whenever I'm in the back lakes and I'm moving around, this guy can get uber skinny before I start having issues in comparison to the 120. So here in Texas, along the Gulf Coast, whenever you're out there fishing in the marsh, it's a game of inches. Uh, one inch could mean all the difference in the world. That means you're able to easily glide across the water and mud with that one having a lot more surface area to keep the kayak like a bit more buoyant than the 120 you're just going to be able to get around a lot better uh the let's see what other differences do we have i think that's pretty much oh wait no speed on the 136 it is about a half a mile an hour slower than the 120 on the highest speed setting with the Minn Kota, I was only able to achieve around three and a half miles an hour. And that's being very generous on a good day, going with the tide and the wind at my back. So three and a half miles an hour over here on the 120, this bad boy is able to achieve like around 4.2 miles an hour in similar conditions. So, uh, that is one plus that I love about the 120. And I think those are it. That's basically all the differences between the two. So what you, if you're trying to decide, hey, which one do I want? The 120 right here or the 136? Uh, there's just those key factors. How much gear do you want to take with you? If you want to take a lot of gear, well then obviously the 136 is going to be your kayak because it has a a bigger payload capacity versus the 120 so if you're a minimalist and you don't take a lot of gear out there well then you ain't got to worry about it if you have long legs well both of these kayaks will certainly be for you because you still have a lot of leg room to uh, if you're let's say over six foot tall you're gonna have plenty of room to still keep your legs comfy and this one right here, well, same thing. So more payload, less payload. So basically, it's personal preference on what you want to go out there with. Again, both spectacular platforms when they're on the water. Uh, now let's talk about 
the things that I dislike about the kayak. There's not much, but I do think what uh, I have found to be issues, hopefully in version two, they're gonna remedy. As y'all heard me say, they are just super slow. Uh, the Torquedo, for instance, is another trolling motor that usually you can mount on the rear of the kayak, and that thing is light years ahead of the Minn Kota as far as speed goes. Uh, we've got a buddy who has one, and he was able to just like leave us in the dust. We got caught in the rain, and he was off to uh, a dry place. So the speed. Maybe Minn Kota can come up with a different design on the prop. I was told by Old Town that there's nothing that they can do as far as the prop concern is concerned, like maybe do a different pitch for a plastic prop, and I don't think uh, they're going to be able to do that. Uh, what I was told, it's the hull design. So the way that the hull is designed, uh, you're not going to get any more speed. Even if you throw a stronger thrust trolling motor, uh, it's still not going to go any faster because of the hull. So maybe they tweak the mold, come out with a different hull so that you're able to... Actually, that makes... Well, I don't know. I can't say that makes no sense. But anyhow, um, so as far as speed goes, hopefully they tweak that a little bit more. Uh, the next thing that I really can't stand is the, the inability to lock the rudder down. Whenever... I'm out there in the back lake and I have to use the paddle to push pull myself. Every time I make a stroke to the right and then the left, the rudder, it just continuously moves. That is a nuisance. On the PDL uh, lineup, they have their rudder controls over here. It's got a trucker ball and then a tension knob. That tension knob, you cinch it down and it locks that rudder into place so that it doesn't move. What happens is, again, when I'm moving, these pedals are going back and forth. The rudder has a mind of its own. And again, it's a nuisance. You can't track really well with it doing that. Some of y'all are gonna say, problem solved. Lift it up, that's it, you don't got the issue. No, you still have the issue. You put a rudder on your kayak so that you can steer and track really well. So with that rudder down, you need it there, plus, I tend to use my right hand to push pull, so I'm constantly going on the right hand side. Because of that, I would want to lock my rudder in that position. As I make a stroke, the kayak wants to turn that way, but because I have the rudder turned to the right, it basically counterbalances it. So I can just use the right, go straight, problem solved. I would love for Old Town to be able to remedy that. I experienced the same thing on both kayaks. Uh, another thing about the rudder, these cables, they've got screws right here, and if you don't take a look at them before, I'm not gonna say every trip, like maybe once a month, they will have a tendency to work themselves out. And if you are by yourself, um, you might run into a big problem, especially if you don't take the paddle with you because if that comes all the way unscrewed, then <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna be able to balance yourself all the way over here and then start uh, screwing that in. You're basically just gonna be drifting aimlessly. You could still use the trolling motor and because it goes in 360, it'll take a while to get to safety, but you don't want that to happen to you. So maybe if they can figure out some way to Put a locking ring or something like that to keep these guys from backing all the way out but uh, through simple maintenance on your part just a quick look over you can avoid that situation altogether uh, for version two i would also like to see the power pole or the shallow water anchor mount on both sides give us the opportunity some of us cast with the right some of y'all cast with the left when you go to the back like the back of your cast um, you don't want the power your rod hitting the power pole on this side you can give yourself a little bit of extra room if you have it on the left hand side so for you lefties as you're casting the power poles right here it's just give us the give us the option uh, I mean what's it gonna cost to put four inserts right there so I would like to see that done on both kayaks 
Now you look inside the tank well, I like using a crate. Um, Old Town does provide you with bungees to hold everything down, but those bungees are super snag. Uh, they provide a snag point. And what I've done, every time I get a kayak, no matter which manufacturer it is, I remove the bungee because things get tangled up in that stuff and it's a nuisance. So what I wished Old Town would do is provide like lockdown rings. Uh, how I got around it was 75 pound zip ties through where the bungees did go through. And uh, I use these to put my hooks through, cinch them down, and it works. So that's an easy fix, but they could easily just add an actual lockdown ring over here inside the tank well so that you don't have to just like ghetto rig it and uh, come up with your own solution. Uh, another thing that everybody experiences with both platforms, at least I have, when you unlock, oh wow. <laughs> so normally the hatch gets caught right here. Um, it's just a nuisance having to manually with your hand uh, lift it all the way up. It's spring-loaded for a reason, but this is what usually happens right there. It's like, uh, yeah, just come out with a way to fix that pretty easy. And then you got the cup holder issue. They collect a lot of water and there's no drain. What I would love to see is for Old Town to somehow like fix the mold where there is just a little slash right inside here all the way to where that can drain out into here into the scupper and uh, it exits the kayak same thing it'd be easier on the 136 because you can just put that right there all the way down and then it's going to be able to drain carrying that water like check this out yeah i knew there was going to be some over here that's nasty just having nasty stale stagnant water um, another thing with the seating positions that happens on both of these kayaks as well on the low seating position whenever you have the battery inside here the battery tray the top of it on the low seating position pokes up I'm only 180 pounds and I can feel that battery tray on both kayaks and the low seating position that's one of the things that we had mentioned when testing the kayaks out but uh, yeah it didn't get fixed so you got that and then the only other thing I would suggest for them to do is use better stainless hardware so let's remove this you can see how it's rusted up um, is that gonna affect the performance of it no it's not it's just an eyesore so all the screws and hardware that they use to fasten everything down uh, it's stain it's it's starting to rust up so maybe if you're the type like hey i just spent three thousand plus dollars on this kayak i want something that isn't gonna rust up and look hideous to old town's credit um all my stainless gear probably wouldn't have rusted if I washed the kayaks down after each trip. The majority of y'all are probably going to do that. However, I go fishing quite a bit being that this is my full-time job. I don't have time after each trip to come home, spray it all down. I mean, the trolling motors are lucky if they even got rinsed like maybe once a month. So depending on how you take care of your kayak, uh, you may not even see the rusting at all. So that's it as far as all the things that I kind of dislike about it and that I wish was just tweaked to be a little bit better. Um, now the moment of truth. Which kayak am I going to decide to stick with and continue fishing out of? Uh, it should come as no surprise based off of the videos that I have done thus far. So for those of y'all that do follow the channel, you know that I think this kayak is just super heavy and it's way too long for the truck rack that I have so because of that I'm gonna stick with the autopilot 120 uh, they they have more than enough carry capacity the 120 is just a bit more faster as I said 
and uh, it's lighter so it'll be easier to put on and off my truck rack and I won't have any issues with that whatsoever. Um, one thing that I will say that I didn't even mention as far as the weight of both of these kayaks, when you are considering a purchase or when you're considering purchasing one of these, you need to go into the, like you need to have that mindset that I am getting a very heavy kayak. Don't say like, oh no, Old Town, y'all did a horrible job on these platforms because they're too heavy. Uh, kayaks are supposed to be like, get that out of your mind. Don't be stupid. They are spectacular in every regard. You'd be hard pressed to find another platform that's going to be better than these two bad boys right here that are behind me because they can outperform the Hobie Outback. Uh, it's been my experience and that's why I got rid of my Outbacks because these guys can go a lot faster in six inches of water than that Hobie Outback with the Mirage Drive. I'm not too sure about the Pro Angler. I haven't uh, like had an opportunity to fish alongside someone in the back lake, but uh, as far as the Outback goes, these guys are just way faster. That trolling motor can get you in about six inches of water, and on a speed setting of 10, you're gonna be cruising, while the Hobie is trying to flutter the Mirage Drive and going very slow. So uh, just know that they are heavy, but that's on land. When you get on water, that's whenever they start to shine and you see the true capability of both of these kayaks. So yeah, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. It is hot out here. I got to hurry up and get inside. So if you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. For those of y'all not subscribed to the channel, and you enjoyed today's video stick around for a little bit watch some of the other content that i have on my channel and if you enjoy like if you find yourself enjoying all of that stuff then please consider becoming a subscriber i would definitely appreciate it and if you ring that notification bell icon then youtube will let you know whenever i drop more content that is gonna do it thank you so much for watching mdlr fishing until next time tight lines y'all